This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. Another football season is officially upon us. We cannot wait until Sunday, even though neither of us believe the Patriots are going to have a magical season. We love football, and we love watching the game. We love breaking the game down. There are young players to watch to hopefully be excited over. We'll get to all of that, but first I remind you, the Prize Picks app. Download that app today. Use code CLNS. Get 50 bucks instantly when you play $5. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks to get 50 bucks instantly when you play 5 bucks. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. Also, shout out to our friends at Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. Before we get to our conference previews, Greg, a couple of stories came out this morning. Okay. Uh, Karen Grigian interviewed Robert Kraft about the upcoming year. And Andrew Callahan of the Herald, of course, Carigian's at Mass Live. Want to give them the shout. And then uh, Callahan at the Herald spoke with Elliot Wolf for an interview. Uh, Just two things I want to ask you about. And I tweeted about this this morning at Nick C Radio. If you want to follow me, Greg doesn't need any more followers. He's got like a hundred thousand people following him. Um, but uh, it was a great column by Karen, who is an OG, does her work better than anybody else. And uh, she met up with Kraft. And here's what Kraft had to say, Greg, about this upcoming year. To go along with his decision to hire Gerard Mayo and Elliot Wolf and all that. Quote: I'm always thinking about what's right for the long term. Our businesses are private. I don't need to make reports to Wall Street every 90 days. I do what the right thing is strategically long term. And I think I've done that with Gerard. I'm going to do what my gut tells me and stay with it until I'm convinced it's not right. Garigian writes, of course, Kraft vividly remembers what happened during Belichick's first year. He remembered all the pushback and pundits writing about his huge mistake. Here's what Kraft said about uh, those critics. Quote, Belichick went 5-11 and that first year and they were killing me but I'm not going to let doubters influence my life. I'm going to do what's right for this team and our fan base. It's very important that I think we have a management group. I don't know how we're going to do this year, but we have a management group I feel is right for the future. Greg, I'll just highlight some words. In the first sentence, long-term. Third sentence, long-term. Then in the uh, second quote, you have, I don't know how we're going to do this year, but we have a management group I feel is right for the future. Mm -hmm. I know RKK has talked about making the playoffs and all of that stuff, but I took from this interview, he knows what's going to happen this year, and he's getting people ready for a tough season, reminding them this is about the future. Your thoughts? Uh, So I I did skim that um, that interview um, story. I I thought most of it was um, basically versions of things that he – has said whether it was yeah. the owners' meetings or Gerard's introductory press conference. Um, the trip to Israel was was really hit on. Yeah, during this interview. I mean, the, uh, I understand why you you took that out. What I took out of it um, was sort of the vibes, Israel, spiritual, yeah, like, um. You know, okay, maybe if I'm picking somebody's godfather, then then that's the stuff that's important to me. But you know, I, I I'm trying to uh, hire a football coach and somebody mm-hmm. to win Super Bowls, and you know, you, he he could feel that way about Gerard Mayo. You could also say that when he hired Bill Belichick, none of those things were true about Bill Belichick in terms of it was all, you know, what we've heard Robert talk about with Bill over the years has all been about his mind, how he thought of analytics, how he thought of economics, like he was ahead of the time. Like you could see, like, so, so Bill, they believed at the time when they hired him was giving them um, an edge football wise, uh, team building wise that other teams didn't have that the Patriots weren't used to that they could use to their advantage. And now I compare that to ways talking about Mayo and all I could take away from it is, uh, Mayo gives the Patriots an, ebbs, uh, an edge in terms of um, vibes and spirituality. Um, yeah. 
okay. Um, again, yeah, if I was picking my grandfather, for, uh, godfather for my kids, then those things would be important to me. But we're trying to win football games here. So, look, just the same way as I talk about, like, Elliot with personnel, Gerard with his coaching decisions, RKK gets to hire the, the coach. And he can have his reasonings. And I'm not going to push back hard against it. I'm going to note certain things and some of my worries and some of the things that I like. But largely, I'm going to be like, okay, he's earned the right to make the decision. Then the scoreboard will tell the tale. Um, so, you know, just from a football standpoint, if I'm a football fan, I thought the reasonings and in, in a lot of them that we've already heard from Robert um, for picking Gerard um, were pretty weak, in my opinion. But it's his team. Did yeah, I would first say I want to get to the comments you're mentioning, and I want to let people know in case they didn't read the article what exactly Kraft said. I will say, you know, the benefit of the doubt, you think they hired Pete Carroll. It didn't work out in New England, but Pete ended up being a pretty damn good head coach mm -hmm. eventually, right? Yep. And then they hired Belichick. So, so far, so very good when it comes to picking head coaches. But, Greg, what you said about, you know, the spirituality and some of the reasoning, it feels to me like this was a hire done with the heart and not necessarily the head. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kraft said, and again, this isn't about religion or spirituality. We're not we're not talking about that part of it. We're talking about that being the reason to hire somebody for a very important job. Uh, Kraft said about the trip to Israel, we went to a lot of special places. And then he said, I remember his reaction when he got baptized in the Jordan River. Mm -hmm. I saw a sign of spirituality. I could tell that moment was special. Again, I have no idea what in the hell that has to do with hiring him as a head coach. Mm -hmm. And then he said, Kraft said, uh, the main thing, we're at the airport getting ready to leave. So he, he says, like, this is the main re This was the watershed moment. The main thing, we're at the airport getting ready to leave, and there was a big delay. So we had all these guys sitting around. Then Gerard organized a meeting with a forum and held a discussion on the trip. He did it all on his own. And at that moment, I saw the initiative and the way people respected him, and I said to myself, he's going to be our next head coach. Wait a minute. So he, he got, the, he got the, the Yaya Brotherhood meeting together, and they all held hands in the airport. Okay, great. He showed the initiative. But that's back in, what, 2019? Mm -hmm. And Robert's saying that it was five years ago when he said this guy is going to be our next head coach in, in craft. Again, this might all work out, and, and I hope it does. But the reasoning, man, so like five years ago, coming off of a very spiritual, emotional trip, in that moment, you made the decision that Mayo was going to be your next head coach. No matter what happened with the team, no matter what happened with Mayo, no matter how the league changed, no matter what Mayo did from 2019 to 2024, I don't love that, Greg. Yeah, and and there's this is something that we've also talked about, and like, you know, if he was um, ordained to be the next head coach, which evidently was like five years ago, um, then Robert should have talked to Gerard and said, like, look, you're our next head coach. I want you to prepare for that job down the line. And that might not be here uh, the way we all know the way Bill is in terms of, you know, titles and responsibilities and Steve's there. And, you know, like. I've said this before, and even even at the time they had the written into his contract succession, like he would have been better off for a year or two going somewhere and being somebody's defensive coordinator, being in a distance, right. different system, being with a different offensive system. Maybe he gets buddy buddies with the next offensive coordinator, like you know Slowick or Zach Robinson or something like that. If if, if Kraft really believed that, he he should have been counseling Gerard to be like, look, you need to stop thinking short term and, and about here. You need to start thinking globally. So you need to go out and you need to acquire knowledge and, and um, you know, experience and all this stuff so you can come back and be our next great head coach. And, you know, none of that stuff happened. And uh, so that's another disappointment to get back to the, the quote that you were talking, the quotes that you were talking about earlier on. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think we've 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 seen a lowering lowering of the bar here, and I think at least somebody's giving Robert a dose of reality. And I I the good thing is I think Robert will be patient, a lot more patient than the fan base is. But I I want them I want them to marry th- that in terms of personnel and also the quarterback. If everybody's in this for the long term and they don't mind taking short term losses. Again, you have to prioritize the development of Drake May. I don't want to win a couple games this year, a couple more games this year, just getting Drake May in. Like He cannot play until you think he's ready, and there's very little chance of regression. So in, in if this is the way the franchise is going to be, which I do not disagree with at all, I think this is the, the path they need to go, make sure you keep a global view of all this, including the quarterback. It's as if we've done this podcast before. Greg leads me right into uh, Andrew Callahan's interview with Elliot Wolf, and I, I wanted to touch upon a couple of the comments that Wolf made about Jacoby Brissett starting. He said, quote, one thing with the quarterback position specifically is we've seen Jacoby do it. We've seen him excel in this offense. I think his best year in the league was in this offense when he was in Cleveland. And so there's just more of a known quantity there with what we have with him and we feel like he gives us the best chance to win here early in the season. I have another quote, but first on that one, the most telling part to me was gives us the best chance to win here early in the season, early in the season, leaving the door open for Drake may to quickly become QB one if need be right. Yes. So keep that in mind. Uh, Second, comment obviously it's going to depend on how the team's doing and if Jacoby's lighting it up I'll just stop there so we're wondering you know what what are the situations where the Patriots might make the change Elliot Wolf says it's going to depend on how the team's doing and if Jacoby's lighting it up so even if the team is competing but Brissett is not necessarily quote-unquote lighting it up they could still go to Drake May yeah, I you know I would agree with that. I I just think, um, and I think we talked about it last pod, but I don't know. I've been on a bunch of different shows and stuff, so I'm not sure what I've said where. Um, you know, I do think that I think the only reason that Drake May is in the starting conversation, whether it was for Week One or early on in the season, to me, it's more about Jacoby. That um, I think at a certain point in time with the practices, with this performance in the preseason game, I think it dawned on people, or at least they remembered, they're like, oh, right, Jacoby's really not that good. And, um, you know, the more that you see him play, the more you see him hesitate and be slow and take sacks and miss open receivers, which, you know, I guarantee next week when we break down the film, you know, on this pod, you know, I think there will be, I'm just going to say right now, I would say the over under on minus decisions that I have in the game for Jacoby is probably going to be about five over under. And that's, that's normally a lot. I think even for Mac Jones, uh, you know, three or four would be a lot in terms of just decision. Um, and you know, that includes taking sacks and taking hits where I give the quarterback part of it, where I'm like, you, you didn't need to do that. You didn't need to take that hit. You had a guy open. You could have made a different decision. So uh, I think that I think that really internally, I think they've been underwhelmed by Jacoby. And they I think a lot of them are like, you know, hopefully he can keep it together for three, four, five games. But eventually it's going to get to a point where and I think they're there now where Drake isn't all that far off from Jacoby. And, you know, unfortunately, I mean, I do think it goes to some of the stuff that like the Felgers of the world said about like they needed to pick a better bridge quarterback. I mean, it, they were trying to uh, a sort of thread a uh, some very small needle, Nick, in terms of like you could say like go out and sign Baker Mayfield or go and sign Kirk Cousins. Like that's great, but you're talking about guys. First of all, you're going to have to put a lot of resources into them. Second of all. They're sort of alpha dogs, and they're they're not going to acquiesce. They're not going to go quietly into the night 
um, should, you know, the rookie get to a point where he's going to play. You have to find the balance of, okay, you want to get a better quarterback, but, you know, what if the kid's ready, you know, in week eight? How is that veteran going to react? How is that going to affect the rest of the team? You know, it's it's easy to play fantasy football in a lot of different areas, including this one, where you can just say, well, just go pay, pay Baker Mayfield. Okay, fine. What if Baker's two and six, the Patriots aren't going anywhere, and they're like, all right, well, the kid's ready to play. You know, Baker could cause all sorts of issues in there that could affect the rookie quarterback. So, you know, that that's all part of the discussion too. But I, I just think that I think that very quickly, yeah, Elliot's not wrong in terms of he played well in this offense in 2022. We've talked about it. I think he was eighth in QBR that year. Statistically, you can make that argument. I think the film shows something a little bit different, um, not quite as good. And you got to remember, yeah, he was doing that with Kevin Stefanski basically calling the plays, a really good offensive line. He had Amari Cooper. He had some tight ends. He had Nick Chubb behind him. And so there were a lot of things going for Jacoby. And Jacoby needs to be surrounded by a lot to look like that. The Patriots don't have it. So what's he going to look like this year? Mayo and Wolf both talked a lot about culture as we went through the offseason. And I think you could look at the decision to bring in Jacoby Brissett versus guys like Gardner Minshew or maybe spending even more money on a Baker Mayfield. That could have more to do with personality than actual on-the-field play. Wolf might think, we don't know, he might think that Minshew would have been better than Brissett if they brought him in. Mm -hmm. Baker was going to be better. But as you mentioned, Greg, you know, Gardner Minshew, he's a big personality. Yep. I remember all the stories when he took over at Jacksonville. You know, like he he was like one of the topics of that NFL season. And he's his teammates love him. Love him. Yeah. His, his teammates love him. The media loves him. Uh, he's a great interview. He's, again, a big personality. And, and Baker has a lot of that, too. We're like, you know, kind of like, look it, I've got the cachet. I was drafted at the top of the draft. And you know, he's got a little bit of magnetism, too, where Jacoby and this is no slight to Jacoby, but Jacoby's Jacoby. And he, he's not a, a bigger than life personality. He he, of course, has an ego. We all have egos. But just looking from the outside in, you could see Jacoby's ego being a little less than the Gardner Minshew's of the world or Baker's. So this could be more about who Jacoby is as a person more than who he is as a quarterback, because they know they're going to eventually go to Drake May. And they wanted to bring somebody in who, yeah, might not be as good as those two guys, but it's not a huge drop off. And you know, when you make that move, it's not going to be a big deal. It's not. It's not going to become a big deal. All right, we we got to get to the uh, AFC preview. I did want to mention uh, before we get to that though, one more comment from Wolf within that within that comment about the quarterbacks, and I agree with him here. He says we just feel like the worst thing that could happen is you put a guy in before he's ready, and then you have to take him out whether that's him or somebody in another position, for a young player to not be ready and be put in that position, it can be counterproductive to their career. I agree with that. Like, once you go to the young quarterback, I think it's a terrible idea to then take him out mm -hmm. if he's not doing well. I, I think that can mess him up. But also, beyond the quarterback position, Greg, this might give us a look into the other young guys, right? They might be less prone to play Jalen Polk a lot early because, hey, once we put him there and we got him with all of those snaps, eventually he's going to – we want him to be one of the guys. We don't want to then take him out if he's struggling. And then the, the offensive line, Layden Robinson and Caden Wallace, they might be a little bit more patient with Caden Wallace and say, yeah, he might eventually be our guy at right tackle and we slide a Wenu back to the right guard. But we don't want to go to him too early. Because if we go to him too early and then we got to pull him out, that's going to screw up his psyche, especially if we're still thinking about maybe down the road moving him to left tackle. Yeah, I, you know, I, I could definitely see that. I just think, I think Polk's, um, I think he's ready to play. I think his his mental errors, the way I see it on film, and again, I, I don't exactly know what they're being asked to do. Uh, to me, they've gone down with every game. Um, yeah. You know, I just think, he reminds me a lot of, I think he's a better, well, I've said it before, he's a better Jacoby Brissett, a more athletic Jacoby Brissett in terms of his toughness, smarts, uh, reliability, 
all that stuff. And so uh, I'm not worried, you know, as opposed to a uh, Javon Baker, like I could see that, that, that guy being just a mental mess if he's out there and he screws up and the coaches bench him and like all that. We've already seen him go through that in camp after I think it was the second preseason game when he was kind of a train wreck out there. He got demoted yeah. all the way down to third string and, you know, hanging his head and things like that. And let alone going on Instagram and, uh, recording stuff about cops giving him a ticket and things like that. But I, I don't worry about Polk. And I just think, you know, Robinson's been so good. That kid's got to play and he'll he'll be fine. He'll find his way. For the record, I agree with you. <laughs> I'm just looking at how the Patriots might handle it. Yeah. Polk better be out there a lot early on. Yep. And Robinson should be out there as well. All right, before we get to the AFC preview, uh, we're going to run through a lot here. Let's first get uh, Greg's thoughts on prize picks coming up this weekend and, and what he's looking at and why. Prize picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play da- daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on prize picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you have to do is pick more or less on two to six stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. One Caleb William passing yard gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. I, I used it. You're going to hear in a second. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss this deal on prize picks because it's gone when September ends. For this weekend, and pretty much I'm sticking just to the Patriots game because I it takes me too much research to figure out what's going on with other teams. <laughs> At least I know a little bit about what's going on with the Patriots and their opponent that week. So this week on prize picks, uh, and I did six picks. So I took the Caleb Williams free square, so that's one. I just have to get five out of the next five. I took Antonio Gibson over 12 and a half receiving yards. I think that's definitely going to happen. It could happen in the first quarter with Antonio Gibson. I think they're going to be relying on him a lot in the passing game. I took Hunter Henry more than 27 and a half receiving yards. There was also the catches. I think it was four. I didn't feel as good about that. I think in this offense, Jacoby loves throwing to the tight end. This offense highlights the tight ends. All they need is one sort of play action seam pass, which this offense loves. And Hunter could hit that again in the first quarter. Jacoby Brissett, I took less 19 and a half pass completions. If he's completing 20 or more passes, the Patriots are in trouble. Now that could happen. That could be the case. But I think right. I think a good day, a competitive day for the Patriots is Jacoby somewhere around 13 of 20, 15 of 22 type of thing. So I went less than 19 and a half. I feel good about that. I switched over the Bengals for two more of my picks. Trey Hendrickson. The defensive end, more than .75 sacks. So he needs one sack against Chuksakor for, I'm feeling pretty good about that one. And <laughs> this one might be a little bit iffy, but I'm going off history. I went Joe Burrow, more than .5 interceptions. Joe has a history of shaky debuts. A couple years ago, he threw four interceptions in the first game against some crap bag team. Uh, I think he's good for a pick in this game. So those are my picks. Download, play along with me. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS and get $50 inst- instantly when you play $5. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks to get $50, $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. All right, speaking of running, let's run through the AFC preview, NFC preview. Uh, we'll start with the AFC East. Greg, who do you have winning the AFC East? And then I know that you also broke down the entire division. So give the people the intel. So I have the, it's going to be very close. Okay. I have three teams within a game of each other. And a lot of this stuff is going to come down to tiebreakers. I see the AFC very close for the last playoff spot. So every sort of head to head matchup, uh, tiebreaker scenarios is going to be huge because I actually, at the end of the day, I had, uh, I had four teams tied at nine and eight for the last AFC uh, playoff spot in the AFC East, the champions. No, I don't feel good about this. The New York jets at 10 and seven. <laughs> I have, I have the bills finishing nine and eight in second place. The dolphins uh, in third at nine and eight as well. And your 
New England Patriots, their record for the 2024-2025 season will be 6-11, and including 1-5 and in the division. 1-5 in the division. All right, so I've got the Jets winning the division as well. I just their their defense is yeah really good. Brees Hall is very smart defensively. Yeah, yeah and uh, you're going to get improved quarterback play even if you don't love Aaron Rodgers. You're not playing Zach Wilson. They won what seven games last year. Mm-hmm. They won seven games last year with what they had at quarterback. I, I have to imagine they win ten. Especially, I agree with you. I think Miami takes a little bit of a step back, and Buffalo continues to take a little bit of a step back. That makes it a little bit easier for the Jets. My Patriots record is five and twelve. I think they finish five and twelve. I think their floor is three wins. I think their ceiling is seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, Greg, I'm going to give you my wins. You let me know if you agree with any of them. So I've got them beating Seattle in week two. Same here. The idea is Geno Smith against this defense. I think they can do some things against him that will bother him. Mike McDonald, uh, fantastic singer, tremendous voice range. <laughs> I mean, his vocal range is out of control. Uh, just check him out, Doobie Brothers and all that stuff. But in his off time, he's the defensive coordinator for the Ravens last year. Now gets the full-time gig at Seattle as the head coach. He's going to throw a lot at Brissett in this offense, but I think they can win that game. Uh, I've got them winning against Jacksonville and London. Okay. I do not have that one. Okay. I think they can get at Trevor Lawrence. I think they can do some things or Mac uh, Jones. against that. Or Mac Jones <laughs> and get after that get after that defense as well a little bit. Uh, and I, I think you could see more Patriots fans than Jaguars fans in London. Uh, I've got them winning the home game against the Jets. Okay. I do not, but interesting. Hmm. What division win do you have for them? Home to the Dolphins. Okay. I could see that. Could, I thought it, about that. And it could be Drake May's first start. Yes. Week five. Yeah. I I was like between the Jets and the Dolphins for the win in the division. I don't I think they'll get swept by Buffalo. I so just, I, I went with the team. Yeah, I just think I think they're getting closer to I mean, they've never beaten Tua, but I think they've been getting closer. I think they know how to defend the Dolphins a little bit better. Um, you know, I just a lot of the stuff that the Patriots are gonna want to do defensively, I think Aaron's just gonna Aaron's too too advanced. He's going to be able to sniff it out, and uh, so I'm afraid of Aaron if he's healthy this year. My fourth win of the season at Tennessee. Yep, we agree on that. Week nine. I think they'll drive Will Levis batshit crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, my fifth and final win, home against Indianapolis. Uh, I agree. That is one of my victories. Dome team. Richardson, of course, played at Florida, warm weather, played in the Dome, still very raw, lots of talent, but very raw. Uh, So those are my five wins. You have six wins. I think you agreed with Seattle, Tennessee, and Indianapolis. So what are the other three wins? You said Miami. Yeah, week five at home. What are the other two wins that you have that I didn't have? Uh all right, let me just go through them because I, I I didn't remember exactly what you said. So week two versus the Seahawks. Week five, yeah, we home that. to the Dolphins. Could be Drake May's first start. Would be a good spot if he's ready and Jacoby is not, quote-unquote, lighting it up. Uh, week nine at Tennessee, uh, we yep. agreed on. Um, not a fan of Will Levis. And uh, I just want to bluff Felger about, like, look at the way the Titans did it. You know, they signed so-and-so and Ridley, and they did it the right way. And the Patriots did it wrong. They cheaped out. And guess what? The Patriots beat him. <laughs> I just want to be able to blow him. Uh, week 11 versus the Rams. Um, and you'll see Ooh. here, two of my victories are West Coast teams coming east. Um, yes. Which is going to be tough. And I'm, I, I I didn't even look whether those games are 4 o'clock or 1 o'clock. But if they're 1 o'clock, it's even better for the Patriots. Um, you know, I think the Rams are fine. But I do think, you know, life after Aaron Donald is not going to be easy for those guys. And, you know, they have Jared Verse and all this stuff. But, you know, I'm not. I'm not crazy about them. Who knows if um, if uh, the quarterback? I wanted to say Sam Bradford for a second. I was going back in the day. Um, what's his name? Matthew Stafford. Yeah, Stafford. Matthew Stafford. Who knows if Stafford is even healthy? Then you know, is it Stetson Bennett? Like you know, who the hell knows? So you know, I'm I'm just going to go Rams at home with the West Coast team coming east. 
I have the Colts at home, which we agreed on. Who knows that yep. who's a quarterback? Who knows if Anthony Richardson is any good? I do think that team has talent, but we say the same thing every year about the Colts, and they're always the same. They're sort of blah. Um, and this is a bit of a surprise. Week 17 versus the Chargers. Again, a West Coast team coming east. The Chargers are probably going to need that for the playoffs. They'll probably be well-primed with Harbaugh and all that. I just feel like, you know, I just – maybe the Patriots catch them napping a little bit. I do think that they'll win one of the last couple games, whether it's the bills at home and the bills might not need it or something like that. I do think, I think they'll find another victory towards the end of the season. I don't think, I don't think it'll be like last season when everybody's given up hope and doesn't really care anymore. I like the chargers one. I had that as a possible, if I could swap any of the games, you know, maybe they lose in London I do like the Chargers. By the way, the Rams game is 1 o'clock Eastern. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Chargers is TBD. Right. So that's the old to be determined. So the 1 o'clock games, if if that one, probably it'll be a crap bag game. Um, If that's 1 o'clock too, that's a huge advantage for the Patriots if they're playing at 1 o'clock Eastern. It's right before Thanksgiving. Maybe Sean McVay is thinking about Turkey. Yep. Um, Then you've got, but the the, the Patriots twofold that Chargers game. Number one, they do have to fly to the east, as Greg said. It's also December 29th. Mm. So after Christmas, right before the new year, uh, I would imagine it's going to be cold in New England, maybe a little yep. bit of snow. You get the California team coming cross country to play in some poopy weather. Yep. Uh, and that Justin Herbert has not been good against the Patriots. And look, some of that could be Bill Belichick, Steve Belichick. But I have to imagine DeMarcus Covington has some tricks up his sleeve. Um Herbert's been pretty brutal against the Patriots in his young career. So uh, something else to think about. All right, AFC seeds. What do you got? AFC seeds. Let's see. I have number one, the Chiefs. Number two, the Ravens. Number three, the Texans. Number four, the Jets. The wild cards, Bengals, Chargers, Bills. And, you know, the Bills just edge out the Dolphins, Jaguars, and Broncos, who are also all at nine and eight. By the way, I'm not saying go bet this, but one of the one of the over unders that I like this year on wins is Denver. I think they're like four and a half or five. Yeah, and a half. I don't get that. I can't. I mean, you saw him with Russell Wilson last year, and all the all the chaos. Sean Payton. I, I'm going with at least six wins with Sean Payton. Didn't they win coach. like seven or eight games last year? Like, and I don't even know how the hell they did that. Yeah, exactly. Wilson was like looked like a right-handed Tebow at times. <laughs> um, we agree with all. I think we agree on all seven teams. I flip flopped the Ravens and Texans. I got the Texans as the two seed. Uh, I flip flopped. I think it was the Bills and Chargers. I got the Bills six, Chargers seven. But yeah, Chiefs, Texans, Ravens, Jets, Cincy, Bills, Chargers are my seven. All right, NFC. Let's get to the NFC. Your seeds there, Greg. My seeds in the NFC. Forty uh, Niners. Lions both tied at 13 and four. I think that was a, a head to head. I think I had the 49ers over the Lions. I'm pretty sure they play this year, and that's why they got the number one seed. Uh, the Cowboys 11 and six because I think their division's a bunch of doo doo. Number four, Falcons five, Packers six, Eagles. So, Eagles and Cowboys tied at 11 and six. Must have been sort of t- tiebreaker scenario. Number seven, the Seahawks. Hmm. Seattle. I don't have Seattle. I, I've got Detroit as the number one seed. I've got Philly, the Niners, and the Falcons. Cowboys, fifth seed. Rams, Packers. Those are my seven. So you have the Rams um, instead of uh, – you have the Rams, I have the Seahawks. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll take Mike McVay over uh, Mike McDonald. <laughs> uh, but I do love his singing. Yes. Yes. Taking it to the streets. <laughs> I can't forget not to love anymore. Yeah, I'll give you a little. Oh, sweet you little... freedom. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at Newport with my brother. My brother's a huge Michael McDonald fan. Wow. He kicked ass. Mike and the mechanics. He killed it. He killed... <laughs> it was just him and a, like a little keyboard up there. A big stage, just him and a little keyboard, like a like a kid keyboard, and he crushed it. He crushed it. Um, 
Super Bowl. What's your Super Bowl, Greg? My Super Bowl is the Chiefs. So I, I have the Chiefs over the Bengals to get to the Super Bowl, and I have the the Lions over the 49ers to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got the uh, Lions in the Super Bowl. I've got the Cincinnati Bengals in the mm-hmm. Super Bowl. Holy crap, Lions, Bengals. Who, who do you think wins the Super Cats Bowl? Cats and dogs right? living together. To- total anarchy. Uh, <laughs> I have the Chiefs with the three-peat, and it'll drive people crazy around here. I just think if they can get they if they get within sniff, if they can smell that three-peat, that Super Bowl week, if they can get there, I don't think there's any way they're losing that game. Lions, Bengals, the Lions win the Super Bowl. Oh, my God. Party. Hell is going to free, freeze over. Hardy does the morning show on 98.5 Pantless that week. <laughs> and uh, it, it's it's utter chaos in the streets. We don't even know what to do with ourselves. Before we get to the awards, I want to throw this out there. I am going to dunk so hard on Felger and James Stewart today. Because your guy, Burt Breer, just went on NBC Sports Boston and said the Patriots offered more than $80 million guaranteed to Brandon Ayuk. Oh, man, boom. Man, Jay Stu and Felger down bad. Oh, I'm going to be insufferable on Twitter. Oh, I, I, I hope Jay Stu's ready for the nonstop barrage I'm going to send his way. All right, let's get to uh, awards. We'll start with the easiest, I think. And we'll also do our Patriots awards for each category. Yep. Um, MVP, Greg. Mahomes. Yep. Patriots MVP. Ramondre Stevenson. I would go with Stevenson. You went with Stevenson. I'll throw this randomly out there in Hunter Henry. Yep. Got a chance. Offense. Offense tight end driven. He's looked pretty good in camp. I think people overlook how good he is. He can do some things. Offensive player of the year. Brees Hall. Jets. I just think he's. Ooh, I like that poll. Yeah. He, I just think he's going to be. He's going to be really good in the, in the run game, the pass game. Uh, yeah. Give me angry Jamar Chase for oh, Cincy. Nice. Uh, Patriots offensive player of the year. Pop Douglas. I just think uh, hopefully he stays healthy. This is all a health thing because if he stays on the field, he'll be highly productive. So go with Pop. We agree. Defensive player of the year. Micah Parsons. I, I just can't. But now that Aaron Donald is out, um, I can't go with anybody. He's the, be- he's the best in the league. Well, if you think about my Super Bowl pick. Going to grab somebody from there. I'm going to go with Aiden Hutchinson. Wow. Nice. Player of the year. Uh, Patriots, DPOI. Keon White. I just think he's uh, I think he's primed. I think he's going to be on the field all the time. A little sub rushing inside. Um, yeah, I think he's going to be highlighted. I'm going to go with my Patriots crush, Jabril Peppers. Um, offensive rookie of the year. Caleb Williams. I just think, like, look, I don't think he's going to be sensational. I think he's going to he's going to throw a lot of picks and things like that. But I just think he's going to revive Chicago. I think they're going to be real. I think they're going to be in it. And, uh, um, you know, I, I just think I think it's going to be too tough for the voters to overlook. They're going to be real, and they're going to be spectacular. Uh, I'm going to go with the uh, Patriots' Jalen Polk. Let's go. Wow. How about you? That's right. Uh, Let's go. <laughs> so I am going with. Of course, I'm staying, you know, in character. I'm going with, and by the way, I spelled it Jaden Robinson. Uh, Layden Robinson, uh, the right guard. I just think he's going to be, you know, you remember when Awenu came on and he was really good his rookie year? I, I don't know why, but I think Robinson's going to be even better. Of course, Awenu was like a six-round pick, and Robinson was a fourth-round pick. But I just think that kid, you know, even though he had his struggles, he – I loved how he had his struggles early in that preseason game, but he rebounded and he actually played really well. Like, I think he's going to be a beast inside for them at right guard. Defensive rookie of the year. I have, uh, I have Jared verse of the Rams, um, you know, edge guy. He's going to have to pick up a lot of the Aaron Donald's uh, slack. I don't like a lot of these. I mean, some people will go lot to, or, you know, Byron Murphy, I think is going to be great. And he, you know, the defensive tackle for the Seahawks. I mean, he's probably my favorite defensive player, but those guys, I think Aaron Donald's the last defensive tackle to to get that. And he's not going to have the kind of pass rush numbers that Aaron Donald did. Murphy fell right into the lap of Seattle and he was exactly what they needed. Yep. Um, I'm angry at you because I also had verse and I thought I might surprise you with that <laughs> one, but you stink. 
uh, the Patriots defensive player of the year, Greg? So they don't really have one. Uh, your 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 possibilities are Del Pettis. Uh, That's my guy. Undrafted free Del agent. Pettis. Or Marcellus Dial, which, you know, last time he was burnt toast in the preseason game. So I'm not picking him. I did want to take one moment to mention. So I was at a practice the other day. And this guy, Oshan or Oshan Mathis, this outside linebacker, number 32, that they picked up on the practice squad. Holy yeah. cow, that dude is a dude. Like, I was like, who the hell is that? Like, he is built like an Adonis. And so... You know, who knows? Look look for him to get a shot at some point. And when you see him out there and you're like, it reminds me a little bit of Jamie Collins, but more in like a safety body, if that makes sense. But uh, anyways, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, you know, good looking dude off the hoof. Coach of the year. Coach of the year. Uh, uh, Jim Harbaugh. I think that he is uh, everywhere he goes, he has an instant impact. And that's, you know, I can't wait for him to uh, resurrect Justin Herbert and lead him to multiple Super Bowl titles for all the people who are just like, oh, he doesn't win enough. And like, he's kind of choky. Like, come on. Brandon Staley was his freaking coach. Like, what are we talking about? And so Jim, J Jim Harbaugh uh, of the Chargers, not the Rams, is uh, is going to be the, defense, uh, the coach of the year. Staley sucked. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Harbaugh. I had down, so I'll do something different here. I'll, I don't know. I'll, top of my head, I'll go Dan Campbell. Why the hell not? There Patriots assistant coach. So I'm going to go with Scott Peters, the offensive line coach. I think it's uh, you know because where the bar is, and I think um, I think in fairly short order, I think they'll get things settled on the offensive line, and I think you know the the the, the wide zone run, running scheme will will take hold. They'll get the timing down and all that, and I think. They'll have a decent unit, and so for where the expectations are right now, I think uh, by the end of the year, you're going to think uh, Scott Peters and Robert Kugler, the assistant offensive line coach, the, those guys did a hell of a job. Mike Pellegrino, I think the defense will be good, and I think the defense will be good because of that secondary. So give me uh, Mike Pellegrino. Greg, tell the fine people about game time. It's that time of year. It's football season. It's getting a little chilly out at night. It's just football. You can smell football in the air. And to be part of it, you got to be there. You got to be at the game, whether it's college. You know, BC's doing a good job with Billy O. Go up to the Heights, take in a game, or, you know, get down to Gillette to watch the Patriots. And to help you get there and get the best deal, you got to go to Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play e live even, even easier. Game Time Picks fill out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I love the all-in pricing. You just click a button, you see it, you, you know, you know the fees that you get at other places where you're just like, holy cow, this is like double the amount that I thought I was going to pay. You just need to click that button. You'll know exactly what you're going to pay. No surprises at the end. Seat views, it's a must for me. You get panoramic views from your seat in the app before you buy. I need to know what I'm looking at, where I am, what sideline, whatever. I need to know the information. I was just looking through the app. Looked like some really good deals for me, for Patriots at the Jets Thursday night. I know you got to deal with Jets fans. Just stay out of the third level. There's some good deals in the second level that's a lot safer. I've been there a lot. Uh, but go check out the deals over there. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Uh, terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? game time all right before we get to our game picks and thoughts about this game against the Bengals on sunday i remind all of you that you want to check out bsj 50 bucks for the year bedard giardi doing great tag team work over there uh about the patriots writing about the patriots and i saw uh john corrales had a a write-up on his interview with joe missoula i watched the first part of that last night uh so you want to check that out missoula is a very very interesting and unique individual and it's a he's a madman. It's a fantastic <laughs> talking about how he was how he was uh, studying the the breath control of Broadway actors and actresses when he went to Broadway mm -hmm. with his with his wife. 
because he found it fascinating about their ability to sing and then talk within four seconds of each other. And he wanted to see their breathing patterns. I'm like, I mean, and also he went to the U S open tennis and he's charting unforced errors yes. and stuff like, and how many times, bro, how many times they spoke to their coaches during yeah. their matches. It's it's unbelievable. Uh, also, I remind you, download the Prize Picks app today. Use code CLNS, 50 bucks instantly when you play $5. That's uh, 50 bucks instantly when you play 5 bucks. CLNS is the code. You don't even need to win to receive the 50 bucks. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks run your game. All right, speaking of picks, Greg, Patriots at the Bengals. Game one of the 2024 NFL season. Uh, the Bengals are eight and a half point favorites. This number has gone down a little bit. It started at around nine mm-hmm. and a half. Some places have it down to like seven and a half. So the money is coming in on the Patriots. The over under is 40 and a half. What say you, Greg Bedard? So a couple things at play here. I think that I think that the Patriots are largely an unknown, you know, with new head coach, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, but same sort of scheme. You know, I think I think DeMarcus Covington as defensive coordinator is going to be a lot like Brian Flores than, say, you know, Steve Belichick or Matt Patricia. I think he's going to be, you know, very aggressive. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of things going on in Cincinnati with the whole Jamar Chase thing. You know, how happy is T. Higgins about his contract situation? You got Trent Brown's going to be out there. Uh, you know, Joe Burrow has a history of not playing well uh, early on in the season, especially in the season opener. I don't think I don't think these guys got a ton of work in the preseason. The Patriots got a lot of work in the preseason. I always like teams that do that. I think they have a chance to start faster. I think that Joe Burrow coming back from this wrist thing, um, and another reason why I was a little cooler on the Bengals. Um, you know, I don't know how healthy he is, and I don't know how healthy he is going to be the whole um, season. And you know, I just think, I just think the the Patriots have the ability, as long as Jacoby doesn't turn the ball over, I think that they can. I think that they can hold down the Bengals. They're never really high flying in the opener. Um, Joe, I think, will turn it over a, a time or two, and uh, I just think it's going to be closer than people think. So I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go Bengals twenty, Patriots thirteen. Uh, so that is uh, under yes. the forty and a half. I'm impressed that you did that quick math in your head. Um, yes, I'm going to go uh, Patriots plus eight and a half. I, just too heavy for a week one. I, I just think it's too many points, and many people agree with that. That's why the number continues to go down, as I just mentioned. So if you can jump on this, uh, you know, I think I jumped on it earlier in the week when it was nine or nine and a half. So Pats plus eight and a half, too too many points there. Uh, Van Pelt does have a good history against Cincinnati. So that's something to think about. Uh, Chase, even if he plays, I don't think he's going to be, you know, out there as much as if he had a full camp. So who knows how much he plays if he plays. And Cincinnati really has an issue up front against the run. And I, I think the Patriots can pop some runs against this defense. So. Uh, give me the Patriots. Similar score to you. I, I got it like, you know, 23-16. So a touchdown difference there. And, uh, of course, that would also be just under. Just under the 40 and a half with a total of 39. So those are our thoughts. Hopefully you enjoyed the podcast. We're back early next week to recap what happens on Sunday. Uh, until then, have a great weekend. Enjoy the football. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. should be a great season. We'll talk to you next time.